Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about section 12.6, which is all about surfaces. In this video we're only going to talk about the cylinders, cylinder type surfaces, cylindrical type surfaces. The first problem that should jump out at you is I'm not talking about the shape we would all call a cylinder if I saw it walking down the street. Okay, it's going to be a very technical definition of a cylinder. It should make sense by the end of the video. But before I get into that, I want to first say, why are we interested in these surfaces? For the rest of the course, we're going to be studying these surfaces. We're going to be looking at uh, 3D surfaces, just the way we used to study functions in 2D. Basically, the analogy is that functions in 2D would be surfaces in 3D. If it was a line in 2D, it became a plane. Lots of other things are going to sort of become these three-dimensional surfaces. The next chapter, chapter 13, is going to discuss what happens when we just talked about walking along the surfaces or paths along the surface. Chapter 14 will talk about how to define these surfaces as multivariable functions. Chapter 15 is going to talk about the volume under these surfaces basically the main idea there and then chapter 16 is about what these surfaces do when vectors pass through them and that's going to be the most mystifying thing of all the things i said i'm sure you'll see it when we get to those videos and i also want to say that in this video and all throughout the rest of the course there's going to be a lot of drawing it's not important that we get a beautiful drawing which is good for me my drawings will probably not be beautiful. They're not going to impress you. Um, I want you to understand what's happening. Okay, so before I get into the technical definition, I'm going to say that a cylinder is a planar curve. A cylinder is a planar curve. projected into a direction. I guess in a direction is more elegant. And what's going to happen is the surface is going to be something that changes over that 3D space, whereas in at least one direction, a cylinder is just going to keep being a constant planar curve. I think I mentioned this before. One of my pet peeves is definitions that require other definitions. And you'll see that when we use a book's definition, we'll also have some stuff that needs to be clarified. But a planar curve is any curve that lies entirely in a plane and that definition really should make sense because all of the math you do before this course pretty much is about planar functions that's why we're always graphing in the xy plane we're never thinking about well what happens when we get out of the xy plane the curves always stay in the xy plane so 2d is what we're thinking it can fit on an xy axis, like a parabola. In 3D, you can even draw a planar curve in 3D. And it would look like that same parabola would look something like this. Okay, just living in the xy plane still. A non-planar curve would look like this, like maybe it's waving around and it goes behind the x-axis, sorry, the z-axis. And that kind of curve could not fit in a plane. Again, these non-planar curves are what we'll study in uh, chapter 13. And I'm not gonna get into the function now. It would basically be a parametric equation or a set of parametric equations. Okay, so the book's definition.
a cylinder is a surface that consists entirely of lines, which we'll call rulings sometimes, that are parallel to a given line and pass through a planar curve. So my first job is to convince you that this definition in black says the same thing as the definition in blue at the top. So the rulings are going to be the things that project me along a given direction. The rulings are what's going to project me along a given direction. So picture us projecting along the y-axis in that picture or picture me projecting along the z-axis in that picture. And we would get two different things. Once we start drawing this, I think this will actually make a little more sense. I think I can actually draw cylinders, although I might eat those words. More than the formal definition here, more than anything that happens on this slide, what I want you to realize is a much more informal or maybe practical definition for these. So how to identify. We want to be able to recognize the cylinder when we see it in the streets. One, the equations for cylinders have only two variables. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to give a trace or gives a trace a trace or a planar curve. A planar curve is a specific kind of trace, planar curve, in the coordinate plane of the remaining variables. And I know, again, this might sound crazy to you. It's going to make a lot more sense when we do the first example. Just give it a second. So we're going to give a trace of the curve on whatever coordinate plane is given by the remaining variables. And then two, the missing variable becomes the direction the planar curve is projected in. Or along, maybe I like along better. Example. Z equals X squared. Right now, who is missing in that equation? Pretty easy to tell, it's Y. So I'm gonna think about, you don't always have to do this one. We're gonna graph the X, Z plane. I know you might not have thought about this yet, but just think right now, what shape would that be if we graphed z equals x squared in the x, z plane? We're not looking at y. It's like y is pointing directly at us and we can't see it anymore because of the perspective. So what would this look like? And if you're really having trouble, it would look just like what would happen if we had y x squared. So we're talking about a parabola that looks like that. So in the 3D system, where we have X and Y and Z, what does that curve look like? That curve looks something like this. And we're picturing something that's lying flat in the XZ plane. When we start drawing a little bit more, trust me, this will make sense. So maybe the vertex is a key point at the origin, and maybe we have a few other key points here. What we're going to do is give traces of that object 
along the missing variables direction. So what's the missing variables direction? Sorry, first I wanna make sure my parabola, it does go past those two points, okay? It does go past those two points. The missing variable is y. So I'm gonna go along the y-axis and we're going to give rulings through each of the key points. This is what I mean by rulings. We're trying to go parallel to the y-axis and through those key points I drew. So all my lines are going parallel and kind of with the y-axis. And what we're gonna get here is these alternate parabolas that are kind of getting projected along with our cylinder. And what we have here is sort of like a half pipe. Let's see if shading will help. So again, it's just the surface. It's just a surface. It's not a solid, okay? It's like a half pipe of these parabolas. The book has a pretty good picture. You could draw more rulings if you like, right? Like all of these would be a ruling and all of these would be a ruling. So we would call this guy a parabolic cylinder. Its planar curve is a parabola. It's a cylinder because it doesn't change as we move along the y-axis. With respect to the y-axis, it's always a parabola. It's just different versions or levels of that same parabola being traced out at different z heights. Like this is z equals, sorry, at different y, y places. This is the parabola at y equals one. Maybe this is the parabola at y equals negative one. And of course at the y, z, sorry, the x, z axis, that's the parabola at y equals zero. The y changing doesn't change the curve we have. That's what makes this a cylinder. And it's a parabolic cylinder because the planar curve is a parabola. Now let's do another problem. The rest of the video is just going to be more problems to give you more examples. So if you're feeling cavalier, go ahead and try them out. Pause the video after I write down the problem. And if you're not, just take some hints and do it that way. All right, so x squared plus y squared equals one. Now, when you first get started in this class, you might say to yourself, oh, I know that. I know exactly what to do. I'm going to go back to the X, Y axis. My old friend, and I'm going to graph my unit circle, my favorite function. That's good instinct. You always want to start by graphing the plane we have. We have X, we have Y. This is what the curve looks like when z equals zero. But now we're trying to graph it in the x, y, z system. So we're going to try to go ahead and I'm going to give myself some ample room here. And the four intercepts are my key points. Just try to give yourself some space. This may or may not be my second take. When I saw what happened, we don't have space. And there's my circle on the floor, on the Z axis. And what we're going to do is draw rulings through each of those key points parallel to what? Parallel to the missing variable. Sorry, I'm going to create some depth here maybe, I hope. Parallel to my missing variable, which is the Z variable. So there's my key point number one. I'm gonna draw a line parallel to Z going through there. Parallel to Z going through my key point. Parallel to Z, and here's the issue. It will look like it hits the other key point. Just be aware that that's a mirage. 
based on the relative positions of guys. I'm just going to draw another one over there. Hopefully we can add some sense of dimensionality. We're going to lift this circle along those rulings. And so we're going to try to draw new key points. Like here, maybe here. And we're trying to give it some sense of that same sort of direction. Like this. Maybe. I'm going to go a little lower so that can be a little higher. And another one down here. And what we have will be a 3D cylinder, a circular cylinder. And again, we're just talking about the sheet. We're just talking about the surface, like the surface area of um, a cylinder. This is what we would usually mean by a cylinder. So again, what this would be called is a circular cylinder. And it's oriented in the Z axis. How do you know it's oriented in the Z axis? Because the Z is the missing variable. So now that we did that example, here's a really good one for you to try. If you haven't tried that one yet, try this one. What changes when this happens, sorry, when this happens, think about it and try to draw something. Pause the video if you really want to give it a try. Here's some hints. First, let's draw what plane, what plane do I want to draw? I want to draw the YZ plane. And what shape would we make in the YZ plane? Usually when we do YZ, students get confused. When we do YZ, I want to make sure Y is the variable going that way. It really doesn't matter, but it's a matter of uh, formal formalism. A lot of, I would say most people do it this way, where Z is now considered the usual output variable is what we'll see in chapter 14. And what would this guy look like? What would this graph look like in the YZ plane? Well, it's still a circle with radius one. Okay, if you can call that a circle. So what changed? Where are we projected along? Where are we projected along? Projected along. And if you've been paying attention, this should be a really easy answer. It's the X axis, the missing variable. So now we'll have done one where we're projected along all three axes. The last example was projected along the Z. This is projected along the X. And our first one was projected along the Y. So what do we do? My YZ plane gives me this. And my circle will look a little distorted here. Okay, but that's a circle along the YZ plane. And here's X. So what do we do next? We're gonna draw some rulings through those key points parallel to the X axis. at least as much as I can. And then one more through the bottom guy. Like that. Still passing through those same key points. I think it got a little bent, but that's okay. I'm just gonna roll up the punches here. So it'll be here, a little bit forward from that. And I'm just gonna go for the loop. Okay, and it's a pipe. A normal, regular, everyday cylinder. Okay, it doesn't have to look beautiful, 
Do you understand why it's a cylinder? Do you understand why it's a circular cylinder? Do you understand why it's projected along the way it is? If you can answer those questions, you're going to do fine. So let's do another example. Let's do Z equals, no, Y equals four minus X squared. Okay, if you feel like rushing ahead, go ahead, try it out. I'm sure you can figure it out. So if we had Y equals four minus X squared, the first thing you're gonna ask yourself, how many variables are there? There's two variables. So what kind of surface is it? It's going to be a cylinder. You'll see in the next part, where we have lots of other kinds of shapes and surfaces, but this is always a cylinder, two variables, cylinder. So I want us to draw the X, Y plane. You should remember what this guy looks like in the X, Y plane. It's a downward facing parabola with an intercept of four. And these are two and negative two, right? Okay. Which direction are we projected along? So we're going to draw the X, Y plane and then we're going to project along the Z axis. So here we go. We're going to draw in the XY plane. And remember, keep track of where we should be. Where should our intercepts be? Orient yourself spatially. One, two in the X direction. Maybe this is what I was missing on my other pictures. Maybe it'll look nicer now that I've actually put a scale on here. Two, three, four. And we have a nice parabola going through those points. Okay, forever and ever and ever. I don't like that either, okay. It's lying in the XY plane. It's doing what it used to do. It's pointing down, it's pointing down along the Y axis. It might look bent to you. I assure you it's right. For all my faults, this is right. And I'm so happy we're not doing a, a circular cylinder because now there's only those three key points I wanna keep track of. So now I'm gonna do my rulings in blue. Sorry if the color seam switch messed you up. We're gonna go through Trying to go parallel to the z-axis, parallel through this point to the z-axis, parallel through this point in the z-axis. And now we're going to try to lift the parabola up and project the parabola down. We're projecting it both up and down along those rulings. And remember, really, this surface has infinitely many rulings. So what we should be talking about is something maybe down here. Oops, too far down. And over here. I'm just gonna draw it freehand. Something like this. It's looking a little flat on one side. Again, I'm not caring so much that I'm drawing this 100%. I care much more that you understand the theory why does it look the way it looks? This would be another parabolic cylinder going along the z-axis though, like a half pipe type shape. Let's do another example. Let's do um, 9x squared plus 4z squared equals 36. How many variables do you see? There's two variables. So it's going to be a cylinder. Two variables, I'll actually write down this time, means it's a cylinder. Which plane should we draw our first sketch in? 
XZ plane for the first trace, for the first planar curve. And that means we're going to be directed along or projected along the y-axis, the missing variable. Do you remember what kind of conic this would be? Ignore the fact that it's z-squared. When we don't have these two coefficients equal, the kind of process we would do is divide by this side to make sure we get a one. Divide everything by 36. And we'd have x squared over four plus z squared over, na, uh, over nine, I'm right, equals one. This is what? Everybody's positive. Both are squared. This is a ellipse in the xz plane. And uh, the intercepts are x plus or minus 2, z plus or minus 3. Do with a bottom number, it's the square root of the bottom number, plus or minus. You could also just cover that up and solve that equation, right? If we set x equal to zero and solve for z, we're finding the z intercepts. That should make sense. If you need a bigger review, I suggest you look for a review of conics. So let's try to do this without drawing the x, z plane. You could, you could draw the x, z plane it's simple enough though to try to draw the xz plane in my 3d system so i'm going to go two in my x-axis two in my negative x-axis then one two three in my y a z one two three in my z and what we're getting here is an ellipse. So not quite a circle. Okay, not quite a circle. It's an ellipse. And I probably should have... Um, just to give you an idea of we're looking behind the X, Z, X, Y plane there. I don't know. Now we're going to project it along the y-axis. We're going to direct it along the y-axis. So I want to draw rulings. Sorry, I want the thinner. Rulings through each of those key points. Through each. I want the rulings through each of these points. And we're just talking about another sort of pipe. Okay, going along in that direction. I don't like that last one. More like that. Another, it's not a normal cylinder. It's not the kind of cylinder you would have studied in your 3D geometry before. It's an elliptic cylinder. It's an ellipsoid base, sorry, ellipsis based. Okay, I think this video is long enough. I think that's enough of my bad drawings. If you don't like these drawings, you could look at the GeoGebra video. If you want to see some nicer computer animated pictures. I hope your drawings are better than mine. Um, thanks for your attention. Look at the next video for part two where we actually talk about more interesting kinds of surfaces. Thanks for watching. Bye.